six ways to avoid being relocated into a FEMA camp. Now you might want to share this with everyone because we're probably going to need to know this information very soon. Number one, be prepared enough to not need to seek out resources. This is definitely the best advice I can give you. Most people going to FEMA are seeking them out for basic supplies and probably did not prepare enough in advance for the disaster or emergency. Even if you plan on scavenging for resources, being out and about can increase your exposure to being rounded up by National Guard unit and escorted to a FEMA camp. At the very least, you should have a basic survival kit so you can be self-reliant and not need to seek out help. Number two, stay out of locations that have a high risk of mandatory evacuation. You can usually tell ahead of time what areas could be prone to a mandatory evacuation. Is your home vulnerable to a nuclear incident? Is it in an urban area or near a military base that could be targeted by attacks? All of these are examples of where mandatory evacuation could be put in place. So knowing your risk of these threats can help you see the potential for evacuations. Mandatory evacuation areas usually spawn FEMA camps just outside the evacuation area to house all the evacuees. If at all possible, try to have a better plan than being funneled into one of these camps. Number three. Mark your home with a FEMA marking telling search and rescue it was already evacuated. If you want to get real clever, you can mark your home as if it was already visited by a search and rescue unit. Relatively simple and all you need is a can of spray paint. Pair this marking with good light and noise discipline and your home could be skipped over easily by anyone enforcing a mandatory evacuation. Build yourself a good shelter in place kit so you have less need to evacuate in biological or chemical emergency. Now don't get me wrong, sometimes you just have to leave. If there is a chemical cloud hanging over your house or a nasty pandemic spreading through the country like wildfire, it may be necessary to bug out if you don't have the proper tools to stay put. Shelter in place kit is simply an add-on to your typical survival kit that lets you barricade airflow in your home, making it as airtight as possible. Have a bug out location that is not your main residence. I can't stress enough. As we touched earlier, location plays a big factor in the risk of being evacuated. Having multiple locations available ensures you don't get pinned down in one spot. Not many people have resources to own multiple properties, so making friends with preppers not in your area comes in handy here. If you don't have any prepper friends that live far enough away, try helping a few non-prepper friends become preppers. Last but not least, stay informed. Know what's going on before a roundup occurs. Information is always key. Communication is passing the information back and forth. While news sources on TV and the radio can be managed and censored, amateur radio cannot. Staying informed during an emergency using CB and ham radios can help immensely. Not only can you stay ahead of any planned evacuations, but you can communicate with others to work together. Now I know this one was a little on the longer side, but I wanted it to all be in one video. Please share with everyone, AP out. Thank <laughs> you.